The passengers on board thought it was just another ordinary train ride along Taiwan's east coast. But within minutes, a high-speed passenger train carrying more than 360 people suddenly left the rails and tore across the countryside. In just a few seconds, eight carriages crumpled into a twisted W shape. 18 lives were lost, nearly 200 were injured, and the nation was left asking one question. How could one of Taiwan's most modern trains turn into a scene of tragedy? This is the untold story of the Yilan train disaster of 2018, a tragedy that shocked a nation, exposed hidden flaws, and left haunting questions that demanded answers. Yilan sits on Taiwan's northeastern coast. It is about 35 miles or 57 kilometers from Taipei and around 55 miles or 88 kilometers from Xinchu. The Yilan line runs across the municipality. It is a double track electrified railway covering about 58 miles or 94 kilometers with 27 stations along Taiwan's northeast coast. The line first opened in 1924 during Japanese rule. The line is built on a narrow gauge system with rails set 3 feet 6 inches apart instead of the global standard of 4 feet 8 and a half inches. The Yilan line is served by the Puyuma Express, a passenger service first introduced in 2013. It uses the Nippon Shario Temu 2000 series a modern, tilting electric train designed specifically for Taiwan. Nineteen of these train sets were built. Each train is made up of eight cars, two at the ends for control, and six in the middle. Unlike older trains that rely on a single motor car, the Puyuma spreads its power system throughout the train. It is divided into two propulsion units, giving the train a built-in backup if one side fails. Its most advanced feature is tilting technology. As the train enters a curve, the cars lean a few degrees into the bend. This allows the train to take sharp mountain turns at higher speeds, while keeping passengers comfortable and safe from the force of the curve. On October 21, 2018, southbound Puyuma Express train number 4 was nearly full, carrying 366 passengers. By 4.45 in the afternoon, it approached Jinma Station in Yilan. The track north of the station runs straight for a short stretch, then bends into a wide left turn. Immediately after comes a much sharper right-hand curve, only about 980 feet or 300 metres in radius. The station platform itself sits inside this bend. For safety, Trains passing through this curve are restricted to 46 miles or 75 kilometers per hour. But at 4.49, the Puyuma Express entered the turn at 87 miles or 141 kilometers per hour, almost double the limit. Some survivors recalled the driver trying to use the emergency brake just moments earlier, while others remembered no such action. Either way, by the time the train reached the curve, it was far too late to prevent disaster. As the Puyuma Express entered the sharp curve at Zinma, the centrifugal forces were simply too strong. The front car was pulled almost straight off the rails. It broke away from the rest of the train, sliding onto the opposite track before toppling onto its side. The second car derailed right behind it, ripping up the tracks. A twisted rail pierced through car six like a lance as the coaches piled into each other. Cars 3 through 7 folded into a deadly W shape, each one slamming unevenly against the next as the train lost momentum. Only the last car remained on the rails. Several others rolled over as their wheels dug into the earth, but limited collisions between them meant most cars kept enough survival space to protect many passengers. Still, the disaster was devastating. 18 people lost their lives and 233 were injured most of them in the leading car, where the centrifugal forces had been the most unforgiving. The first to reach the survivors were not emergency crews, but people waiting at Jinma Station. They rushed to help just minutes before professional responders arrived. Soon, 
nearly 400 rescuers, including 100 soldiers, were working at the wreckage. The train's driver survived the crash. After being released from the hospital, he was immediately detained and questioned by both police and investigators. What puzzled investigators most was how this disaster could happen on a modern rail line, with a train only five years old. Just a year earlier, it had undergone a full inspection and overhaul. On paper, everything should have been safe. A train should not have been able to go that fast. Certainly not by such a wide margin. Attention quickly turned to one critical system. The Automatic Train Protection, or ATP. This safeguard constantly monitors speed and is designed to stop the train if a local speed limit is exceeded. Investigators learned that the driver had reported problems with the train's main air compressor earlier that day. This system powered the brakes, the doors and even the toilets. And according to the driver, it was working only on and off, reducing brake performance. The first signs appeared at 2.50 in the afternoon when the train left Shulin Station. The driver notified the dispatch centre, but was told to continue. Even if the compressor failed completely, they said, the brakes would still have enough power to keep the train safe. As the journey went on, the problems grew worse. By the time the train passed Shuangxi Station, about 90 minutes before the crash, it was already four minutes behind schedule. The driver tried to reset the train systems, but nothing worked. Air pressure dropped below the safety limit and the train's own protection system began to react. Through the automatic train protection system, the brakes engaged automatically, ten times in total. The last intervention came at 4.17, by which point the train had fallen 14 minutes behind schedule. Frustrated, the driver made a fateful choice. He switched off the ATP removing the very system designed to prevent speeding accidents. From that moment on, nothing stood between the Puyuma Express and disaster. Recordings later revealed that the train made an unscheduled stop at Yilin Station. The driver tried once again to fix the fault, but nothing worked. Dispatch then ordered him to continue all the way to Hualien, almost two hours beyond the crash site, where the train could finally be replaced. But there was another problem. Departing Yilan with the automatic train protection system disabled should have immediately triggered an alarm at the dispatch centre. For reasons still unknown, no such alarm was ever raised. At 4.46 in the afternoon, just two minutes after passing Luodong Station, the train surged to 140 kilometres per hour, or 87 miles per hour. At that very moment, the driver was still on the radio with dispatch trying to figure out what to do about the compressor failure. The conversation ended suddenly. Just moments later, the Puyuma Express left the rails outside Jinma Station. Investigators later pieced the chain of events together. To them, the evidence was clear. The driver had switched off the automatic train protection system and then left Yilan without it re-enabled. Perhaps he was desperate to make up the lost time. But in doing so, he also forgot about the sharp turn ahead. As a result, his train entered the curve at almost twice the speed limit, a mistake with deadly consequences. A deeper probe into the automatic train protection system uncovered a shocking truth. None of the Timu 2000 train sets had their ATP linked to the dispatch centre. This meant the control office could never see if a train was leaving a station with its safety system switched off. On November 1st, Nippon Shario, the manufacturer, released a statement. They explained that the instructions they were given required the ATP to remain disconnected from the remote monitoring system. And since they were not allowed to carry out electrical work in Taiwan, the trains were delivered this way. It was now up to the Taiwan Railways Administration to connect the system. But recordings revealed another failure. The ATP connection was never part of pre-service checks. In other words, every single TMU 2000 had been running with the ATP wires left unconnected from the start. Adding insult to injury, one driver later told investigators that the Puyuma trains often suffered from compressor problems 
and other faults in the onboard diagnostic system. These glitches sometimes confused drivers and made them lose trust in the system's reliability. To make matters worse, by the time of the crash, Taiwan Railways had not yet purchased a testing machine that could properly check the TEMU 2000's compressors. The railway company denied the driver's claims, but without offering solid proof. What they could not deny were the hard recordings. Data showed that the compressor on set number 4, the very train involved in the accident, had overheated several times before. Each time, it shut down automatically, just as it had on the day of the disaster when air pressure dropped below the safe limit. The investigation wrapped up in June 2019 with a press release from the Yilan Prosecutor's Office. The findings were clear. The cause of the crash was negligent driving. The driver had departed with the automatic train protection system switched off and failed to slow down for the sharp curve. At first, some claimed he had secretly disabled the system, but radio recordings proved otherwise. In fact, the driver openly told dispatch that he had turned off ATP because it kept interfering with the train's operation. Investigators believed his low trust in the system, combined with his inability to clear the compressor fault, led him to make a deadly choice. He prioritised keeping the train on schedule, a choice that proved fatal. In the end, the driver was indicted on multiple counts of negligent homicide. Investigators also ruled that the faulty compressor was not, by itself, a direct cause of the crash. Even with the defect, the train still had enough braking power to slow down safely. But the disconnected ATP surveillance system told a different story. This oversight was seen as far too serious to ignore. As a result, the former Deputy Director of Taiwan Railways Fleet Management and the Chief of the Central Dispatch Centre were both indicted. Prosecutors stated it was a gross failure that the monitoring system had remained non-operational for years after the Puyuma trains first entered service. The Taiwanese government was not satisfied with the investigation or its outcome. In response, major changes were made. The Aviation Safety Council, once responsible only for air disasters, was transformed into the new Taiwan Transportation Safety Board. From then on, the board would oversee not just aviation, but also rail, highway and maritime accidents. This was a direct result of the Yilan derailment. The crash had been investigated by a temporary task force, not a permanent safety body. The government wanted to make sure such a critical investigation would never again rely on an ad hoc team. The legal proceedings came to an end in the fall of 2021. The driver was sentenced to four and a half years in prison for negligent homicide. The two other officials indicted were found not guilty as the court ruled their responsibility did not meet the level of criminal liability. The judges also noted that the driver was only a substitute on the line with little to no familiarity with the route's dangerous curves. Still, this did not excuse his decision to run without the automatic train protection system. Instead, the court used the opportunity to criticise Taiwan Railways for its thin staffing, which had forced an inexperienced driver onto such a demanding route. In a final twist, TRA tried to sue the train's manufacturer, pointing to the compressor failures that had plagued the fleet. They demanded 610 million Taiwanese dollars, the equivalent of 177 million euros or 193 million US dollars. But the case went to court and TRA ultimately lost. In the aftermath, Taiwan Railways moved to make sure such a tragedy could never happen again. All remaining Timu 2000 trains were fitted with a new speed limiter. If the automatic train protection system is ever disabled, the limiter automatically restricts the train to just 60 km per hour or 37 miles per hour. This measure prevents the risk of derailments caused by excessive speed. The Yilan derailment was more than just a mechanical failure or a moment of human error. It was a tragedy born from a chain of oversights, from faulty systems to thin staffing to decisions made under pressure. 18 lives were lost 
and hundreds more were changed forever. In the years since, reforms have been made, but the memory of that day still raises an important question. How many warnings must be ignored before safety finally comes first? What do you think? Was this disaster the fault of one driver, or a system that put him in an impossible position? Share your thoughts below.